What's up, everyone? My name is Joshua, and I want to thank you so much for being here today. Um, this is going to be my last update as far as my health is concerned, uh, because I don't feel like I need to keep talking about my progress because my progress has been pretty great. Um, I haven't had a tremor yet this morning. It's 11 o'clock in the morning, not to timestamp this broadcast, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing great. Um, I'm doing the Rife therapy still, still taking Genostem, which I was taking before all this started. Um, that has been a huge plus for my health and uh, cause I had health issues before this happened and uh, before the tremors happened. And, um, and then using Rick Simpson oil and yesterday, I uh, just used a little bit of Rick Simpson oil too. And uh, I'm getting better. And uh, by not having tremors today, I feel really, really good about that. So I just want to now move past that. Um, I don't like, I. so as a talk show host, I want to draw attention to the subjects that I'm talking about. So if I do a solo broadcast, there's a specific subject that I want to focus on. It's not so much me, um, but although it does come with the territory, just to be honest, I mean, <laughs> obviously if I'm on camera and I'm talking behind a microphone, I would hope someone listens. I mean, that is an obvious goal. Uh, so when I say I don't want to draw attention to myself, uh, not in a please feel sorry for me kind of way, um, I have a newfound respect for the power of social media, more specifically X, because of um, the way that this whole experience has gone for me, because I reached out to the X community for help because I didn't trust my doctors. And by not trusting my doctors, I put my life in, in some ways in the hands of people I didn't know. But I got information that I was able to sort through and start to do my own research and figure out what I felt good about moving forward. And that's the way I wanted to go. But there was a couple times in there when I thought I was dying that I went to the hospital. Um, and then when I woke up one morning and felt like I had a drill going through my head um, on top of the spasms, that scared me because of the brain scan showing that I had fluid on my brain, uh, a cyst on my brain. That was terrifying. That was beyond terrifying. And especially to wake up with that going, okay, well, now I'm going to put two and two together. And, you know, one of those fun things of being a conspiracy theorist is that you connect dots. We connect dots. That's part of the fun. <laughs> it's to, ooh, that goes together. Or, and like looking for the code and the mystery and everything. And so I'm going, okay, well, my mother-in-law just told me that she was very concerned about the, the cyst. And then I got another sign that I should pay attention to it. And now my head's hurting. Oh crap. I better go to the emergency room. So that last emergency room visit was really about just making sure I got all of the testing done to figure out what was going on to rule out all other possible options. But really the truth is that I just came back to the very place that I believed I needed to be in the first place and the type of care that I needed. And that information came from one, my own personal experience with, you know, health and and products and natural cures and things like that i'm i'm very passionate and geeked out by all of that but then also the x community and being able to take information from so many different places i mean i'm writing it all down i'm watching the videos if it spoke to me i've set it aside and so what i learned from this experience and this is why i want to close this update off this way is to say that this is what I learned from the experience is all it really is. And I'm gonna have a really great devotional to end this too. So hang out for that because this devotional is really, it, it's good and it's timely and it's like the perfect way to end this. And then I'm gonna go back to doing um, 
well, I'm still going to be taking it easy, but I'm, you know, I'm going to start talking about normal stuff again. Um, but the ex, you know, the thing about putting your, 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 your mess or your struggles out on social media is that you put yourself out there for some people to say some mean things and some people to say some really negative things. That was an eye opening experience. And yes, I knew it would happen, but it's, it's, it's like, you know, you can know something's going to happen. And then the, but then when it really happens, it's like, you, there's no way to really prepare for it because it just sucks. It just sucks. I'm like, why would someone think I'm faking? I mean, I'm not that desperate for attention. <laughs> I mean, look, I got big goals and stuff like that, but that's not the kind of attention I want. If if I want the the attention I want is on the civil commitment videos I do or the interviews that I do, because the guests that I choose, like I believe their stories are amazing and they're interesting, and you know, like a, that's what the attention I want, or I want the attention to go on the importance of becoming an independent media organization and learning those skills and i mean that kind of stuff not me you have to understand or you don't have to understand but from my perspective i'm kind of vain i mean i really am i like wearing suits and black like a black on black suit and being dressed up and like i like that i like flashy <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like getting in the gutter too. Don't get me wrong, but I I like all that. Um, but so I don't want to look like an idiot. Like I I I mean, I want to host the Oscars not because I like movies because it's a tough room, but like I want to present myself as a professional when I talk about products, you know, and I do those videos. Like I'm. I'm passionate about that. If I talk about any product or service, you know, I want to, I do it. I want to do it in a way that's like, I'm looked at as a professional. So coming on doing video and shaking like crazy and crying uncontrollably and being in pain and making God awful faces. Like I did an interview like that. I don't know how smart that was, but I did it, you know? And the only reason I did it is because, again, going back to, I mean, check my YouTube page. I do product videos. I talk about services that work and help. Like, this is my thing. So for me to not get on video and talk about this would be like, I wouldn't be being myself. And I said in those videos, this during this series of videos, that part of what brought me joy was doing what I love. Well, broadcasting is something I love to do. And and it, it look, it caused problems because everyone's telling me to rest. Everyone's telling me to stay away from technology. But I like this brought me joy to broadcast, to talk about it. Help it helped me mentally to talk about what was going on. But also, like, what's the point of going through hell and surviving it if you can't show other people how to get out of it? Like my testimony and and how God saved my life and changed my life and changed my heart and 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 really gave gave me the motivation to do the work to get right. I mean, mind you, I'm still working on it, but you know, like, but you know, like God did that for me, changed my heart. And anyway, so I don't want to talk about this recovery journey anymore but i i just felt it was important to to sh to share these videos and 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 to document the progress because you know it, it i feel like i received a miracle for one but i also was doing the work to to get well and these were the treatments i was using and that's how i did it and i don't know if anyone else is going to go through those spasms and and have those freak outs i don't I, I with their body i don't know but if someone does then great if if the progress to getting well was inspiring for someone then great 
but I'm not trying to sell products here. I'm not trying to sell services. I'm not being paid by Rife to say anything. I'm a customer and it freaking worked for me. It's working for me. I think it's working with other things too, but I like, I don't know yet. Like I still don't even understand how Rife is helping me, but it is. So anyway, I'm gonna read this devotional really quick because it's timely and it's a perfect way to end this, uh, these health update broadcast and uh, it's called purpose in your hardships so much can be learned from hard times they teach us wisdom they cultivate patience they make us more loving kind and generous if we allow them to as an athlete i've won some races but i've also suffered some devastating defeats as i mentioned I used to be terrified of falling short, and the fear of doing so has held me back so much in my life. What I didn't know then is that God can redeem our failures and grant us wisdom from our experiences. In recent years, I have made decisions that I wish I could take back, experienced seasons that felt like they would never end in terms of hardship and had overall difficulty in trying to muster up strength within myself. Failures can be painful in the moment, but next time you fall short, try to imagine that what God might be doing in your life. Try to imagine what God might be doing in your life. Lean deeper into him to seek wisdom on how to conduct yourself moving forward. By doing this, you set yourself up to be spiritually connected to the vine and learn from the word how Jesus handled hurdles in life. Missionary and author Elizabeth Elliot once said, suffering is never for nothing. Another quote by her reads, I realize that the deepest spiritual lessons are not learned by his letting us have our way in the end but by his making us wait, bearing with us in love and patience until we are able to honestly pray what he taught his disciples to pray. Thy will be done. As you endure your seasons of adversity, may your gaze be fixed upon Jesus so that trusting in him through it all, your heart may be strengthened to endure as we run this race of life. Reflect. What have you learned from the difficult seasons in your life? Has your faith grown through them? Whether through reading, prayer, fasting, or community, how can your difficult seasons allow you to cling to God? I'm going to answer that real quick whether through prayer, reading, fasting, or community, how can your difficult seasons allow you to cling to God? So here's how I see it. And this, I have nothing to back this up on, but I chose the hero's journey, meaning I chose to choose the path that I believe that God created me to walk. It doesn't necessarily look like what um, I thought it would, but nonetheless, it's the path I chose, and it's where I believe the Spirit leads me. I could be wrong. I, I, I you know, I, I could mess that up from time to time, but I think I'm going on the direction that God has me on. And, uh, but that's a lonely road. Not to sing the White Snake song, but anyway. Um, here we go. I sang the song. I couldn't help it. Anyway, um, I. It, the hero's journey is a lonely road. Now, the thing about it is it is also the ultimate journey to truth, not just truth in yourself, but you find out the truth of the world too on that path, I believe. And, um, and eventually, yes, on your path, you will find your tribe, you will attract your tribe, you will have a tribe, but it is a lonely road for a long time. And typically in those lonely roads, you are by yourself when you hit adversity and it feels like you are alone in adversity. And that is tough. 
And that is where you learn, I believe, to rely on God because there's no other option. You can kill yourself or you can go, okay, I'm all out of earthly options here, God. So how about we go with your way? I surrender this to you. I can't handle this. I don't know what to do with this. I mean, there's no diagnosis. What am I going to do? Thy will be done. I surrender. I trust you. You do that a few times and you start to realize that, hey, I really can trust you, God. I can trust you, creator. Holy crap, you showed up for me again. And I thought that there was no way that that was going to happen. And here you are, showed up again. So then, after a while, then you start to realize that you know that God's got you. And then you have more confidence to reach out to other people. And what I learned in this experience is that I have community. It doesn't matter how large my community is. It means that I have community. I got to see the love from perfect strangers. Strangers that I didn't know. And those strangers um, aligned with maybe things I stood for. Or they aligned the struggle. I don't know. But I learned that I had community. I had people that I didn't know that gave two craps about me reach out and express their love and care and support and showed support in ways that blew my mind. So I learned in this difficult season of life that not only can I trust God, I can trust the community I'm in. And that feels really good for someone that's never had a community, for someone that's never had support, really, and um, or friends. So for me, um, I learned how awesome love is. And I learned how awesome community is. And it's um, as, as much as the world's mere experience and my goals with what I want to do with communities around the world, um, I got to be honest, I think so much of that was because I never felt like I had a community of my own. And uh, so like I was seeking that out because I, I know how important community is because I've never had it. And uh, and now that I'm starting to have community, I love it and uh, it's awesome. And I want to contribute to it in a positive way, in a good way, in an uplifting way. So that's my answer to the question. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the trials you have placed before us. As James says, they are a joy. For amid hardship, I can present my faith as genuine. James 1, 2 through 4. Lord, please continue to be the sustainer in the middle of the storm. May my gaze, may our gaze stay upon you. For your grace is sufficient for us today. In Christ's name, we pray. Amen. All right. It's timely. It's a great way to end this. Um, to say thank you. I mean, I'm not like disappearing, but, you know, the drama of am I going to live and, you know, how many tremors today and kind of it's over that. And, you know, progress updates get boring <laughs> they get boring in a lot of ways they get boring because it's like okay are like we're gonna improve here or just die already or or like mm, are you gonna get well i mean you know it's hard to there's so much to go on and so i'm glad to be over this because i would rather talk about other things but i do want to give all glory to god and um because i believe not only uh, and, and that the God that healed me, I believe that God used his people and their creations to heal me too. Not big pharma. Uh, the, if anything, that, that medicine th that I took initially, uh, <laughs> to calm down made it worse and made me feel worse. And it was natural medicine, uh, including frequency devices and, and, um, rife that helped me get through this and I will continue to do this and continue to uh, rehabilitate myself with nerves and doing all the stuff I'm doing. So 
even though I'm still going to be doing my work and seeing a neuro movement specialist and all of that, I'm going to, um, you know, just quit doing the updates because there's not a need for them. But I'm grateful and thankful from the bottom of my heart for your support and your love and your prayers and just speaking life into me. Uh, that feels good. So now you can, you know, go speak life into the other people that need it. So God bless you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. My name is Joshua T. Berglund, and you can check out the World's Mayor Experience platform at joshuatberglund.com. Thank you.